This week's Steelers preview is sponsored by Hexclad. Go to hexclad.com forward slash chat sports to get 10% off their premium cookware today. And welcome into Steelers Talk, Steelers Nation. This week, it is a big one. Week 15 of the 2023 NFL season where the Pittsburgh Steelers will travel to Indianapolis to take on the 7-6 and six Indianapolis Colts for a game that has massive, wide-ranging playoff implications that really does feel like is a must-win for the black and gold heading into this week's matchup. I got keys to victory. I got team stats. I've got my official score prediction coming your way here in just a few seconds. But before we get into the meat and potatoes of this week's preview, go ahead and click that subscribe button for me right now and join Coop and I for our uh, watch party, our live watch party. We do them for every single Steelers game. We're going to be going live uh, around, I would say, probably around 3.30 p.m. Eastern time here, about an hour before they kick things off on Saturday afternoon. Again, remember, they moved the game to Saturday, so it's going to be very, very important here in front of a national audience for the Steelers to reestablish themselves as a playoff threat with Kenny Pickett out of the lineup. So do me a favor, click that subscribe button right now and join us for all of our watch parties all throughout the 2023 season. Now let's discuss and dive into this matchup here, which really does feel like the crux of the 2023 season for the Pittsburgh Steelers going up against the 7-6 and six Indianapolis Colts. Both teams coming into this game uh, with a record of 7-6. and six. There are a ton of teams. I think there are six teams in the AFC right now with a record of 7-6. and six. And if the Steelers lose this one, they're almost for sure going to be falling out of the AFC playoff picture potentially for good with Kenny Pickett out with that ankle injury. So what's at stake for the Pittsburgh Steelers this week? Well, plain and simply, the winner gets a crucial tiebreaker advantage if these two teams have the same record towards or at the end of the regular season. And also the team that wins gets to keep their spot in the AFC playoff picture heading into week 16. Now for the Pittsburgh Steelers, it will not be starting quarterback Kenny Pickett. Uh, and it won't be Mason Rudolph. It will be uh, Mitchell Trubisky yet again getting the start for the Pittsburgh Steelers on offense. Mike Tomlin at his press conference this week says he's not considering a, a competition. Mason Rudolph is going to be getting some first-team reps in practice this week just in case they have to move off of Trubisky after a terrible performance against the New England Patriots on Thursday night football back in week 14. But it will be Mitchell Trubisky once again getting the start here in week 15. And the big question is, is he going to be able to save the Steelers season here in week 15? Let me know what you guys think down there in the comments section. Are the Steelers making the right call here starting Mitchell Trubisky in week 15 versus the Colts? Type R if you think it's the right decision or if you think it's the wrong decision, type a W down there in the comments section. This is also going to be the pinned comment on today's show. So YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. When that happens, take advantage of that time by answering today's pin question. So now we break down the Indianapolis Colts here, where right now their record uh, is currently sitting at 7-6, and six, of course. Their head coach is Shane Steichen in his first year as the head man there in Indy. The offensive scheme that you're going to see from this team is an RPO-heavy modern pro spread offense. So similar to what you've seen from Doug Peterson's offense or Frank Reich's offenses in the past, they like to do a lot of uh, different types of RPOs, and it definitely works out well for them Oh, and their quarterback, Gardner Minshew. And then defensively, they run a classic Seattle 3, cover 3 match defense with defensive coordinator Gus Bradley. Of course, Bradley is one of the masterminds behind the Legion of Boom era there in Seattle. And he's been a defensive coordinator at a bunch of different stops since then, of course, he was a head coach briefly in Jacksonville, uh, but the defense this year overall has been okay. We'll get into their numbers later in today's show. But let's look at the kind of wins, the quality of wins the Indianapolis Colts have been able to put up. They beat the Ravens all the way back in week three in Baltimore. That's a quality win. Week two, they beat the Texans in Houston. That looks like certainly a quality win at this point in the year as well. But overall, I think that the Colts have been a team that have beaten the teams that they're supposed to beat, right? The Panthers, the Titans twice, the Buccaneers and the Patriots. All those are the games that the Colts are expected to win. And, all the, and I don't think they have quite enough talent to beat some of the better teams on their schedule. They have been beating the teams that they're capable of beating, which is why they're currently sitting at seven and six. Then you take a look at their losses here, and it's a, usually against good football teams. Now that Saints loss definitely doesn't look 
uh, quite as savory, going I'll have to go all the way back to week eight. They've been winning quite a bit lately, but their most recent game here against the Bengals on the road with Jake Browning as the Bengals quarterback, they got absolutely shellac. So at the end of the day here, I do think the Colts are a very, very beatable football team here. No question about it. And first, I want to look at the Colts offensive stats here uh, to kind of break down what we can expect to see from the Indianapolis Colts here in Gardner Minshew. So you look at the points per game here. They're, they're eighth in the league. So they're top 10, but that's the only category that they're sitting in the top 10 currently. They're kind of sitting around league average in most of these other categories. And they have, give, uh, they have given up the football 20 times this year, which definitely isn't what you want to see if you are the Indianapolis Colts. Now let's see how this Colts offense matches up with the Pittsburgh Steelers defense here, where the Steelers defense has been averaging giving up less than 20 points per game this year. That's absolutely fantastic. The yardage isn't quite as good as the points per game number there, but they have turned the ball over a total of 21 times. That's, that's, that's top 10 in the National Football League, doing a really good job right now defensively of keeping points off the board. And with the Colts offense being okay, definitely not bad, but definitely not fantastic by any stretch, I do expect the Steelers defense to do a pretty decent job against the Colts offense this week. Now let's shift to the other side of the ball here where the Colts defense is actually worse than their offense to this point in the year. Now the one thing that they actually do at a top 10 level is take the football away. 21 turnovers for this defense this year. Uh, but other than that, man, they're giving up a lot of points. They're giving up a lot of yards, all these different things. And they're about sitting around league average in some of these other categories as well. So let's see how the Steelers offense and their season trends uh, match up with the Colts defensively here where, you know, the Colts defense a bit squishier than some of these other defenses that they've had to face like the New England Patriots. This defense should be easier for Mitchell Trubisky to maneuver, but he's got to stay away from the turnovers. That's the one thing that this Colts defense can actually do at an extremely high level, and you definitely want to stay away from those INTs if you are Mitchell Trubisky. Now, if you believe the trends here, the trends predict that the Colts are going to win a close one at home this week by a final score of 21 to 20. So if you, if you believe the trends here, this game is going to be a very close football game that's going to come down to the fourth quarter. Now, I'm going to give you guys my official Week 15 score prediction here uh, coming back from after the break here. Also, I got my five keys to victory for the Steelers to beat the Colts this week. And then also, I've got my full Gardner Minshew scouting report coming up here in about two minutes. But before I get into that, I want to tell you about today's sponsor at Hexclad. And let me ask you guys a question here. Are you ready to rock your holiday cooking game this holiday season? Look no further than Hexclad, the revolutionary cookware brand that's changing the way we cook during the most wonderful time of the year. Hexclad's innovative hybrid design combines the best of both worlds, giving you the ease of nonstick, the durability of cast iron, the vers and the versatility of stainless steel. This means you can confidently crush your holiday feast without spending the rest of the week on dishes, and they make for fantastic gifts for the home chef in your life. To spread holiday cheer, Hexclad is giving our listeners 10% off your order with our exclusive link. Just go to hexclad.com slash chat sports, support our show, and check them out at hexclad.com forward slash chat sports for some seriously killer cookware. What's great about Hexclad is that all of their products have a lifetime warranty. These are literally the last set of pots and pans you will ever have to buy. So for all my cooks out there, Hexclad has to be the top of your holiday wish list this year. And let me tell you, man, these pans here are absolutely fantastic. I, uh, Cassie and I, we cook steak, we cook chicken uh, pan sear that on our Hexclad pan just about every single week. I brought it in for you guys. And the reason why I bring it in is because I've used this thing probably, what, 200, 300 times, and it still looks like it's coming right out of the box. Super easy to clean. You're never going to scratch it either. Definitely the best pan I've ever used, and I've made the best steaks of my life on Hexclad. This holiday season, give yourself or a loved one a gift they will actually that will actually last forever and change your cooking game for life. For a limited time only, our listeners get 10% off your order at hexclad.com slash chat sports. Support our show and check them out at hexclad.com forward slash chat sports. Don't let your cookware hold you back this holiday season. Happy cooking and happy holidays. 
So now we get to the keys to victory here for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Number one on my list is you have to contain the Indianapolis Colts run game, which is helmed uh, by two really, really awesome running backs. Jonathan Taylor, he's going to be questionable to go this week Saturday. Uh, he's been dealing with an injury, but even if he can't go, Zach Moss has done an incredible job in relief of JT this year. Uh, I mean, if you have to deal with both of these guys, good luck uh, containing this run game. It's really good. they got a good offensive line here in Indianapolis as well, but this is definitely the main offensive engine for the Indi Indianapolis Colts. And if you are the Pittsburgh Steelers, you really want to put a lot of bodies up there in the box. And you want to force Gardner Minshew, their backup quarterback. Again, remember, they drafted Anthony Richardson, quarterback out of Florida, uh, with the, uh, you know early in this year's draft. And he's out with a shoulder injury for the season. And it's Gardner Minshew who's being tasked uh, to be their starting quarterback for the rest of the season. And if you're the Steelers, you want Minshew, Uncle Rico himself, to be the one that hands you the L if you're going to take one. So my scouting report on Gardner Minshew this week, and honestly, when I look at Gardner Minshew's tape, I just see a decent backup NFL quarterback, somebody that can go out there and potentially get you a W against a bad football team, et cetera, et cetera. But he's definitely not somebody that's going to elevate a roster past what they already are. And I don't think he's necessarily somebody that can get into a shootout with some of the best quarterbacks in the league. He does have good size at 6'1", over 220 pounds. Uh, the experience in the offense here is definitely clear. Shane Steichen, their head coach and offensive play caller, came over from the Philadelphia Eagles where Gardner was the backup last year. So you can tell the comfortability in this offense is absolutely there for Uncle Rico at this point in his NFL career. However, the cons are definitely there. Super inconsistent with his accuracy and decision-making. There's some games where he has three picks. There's some games where he has three touchdowns and no picks, right? So the footwork is definitely not for me, man. I think that at this point in his career, uh, the footwork is probably never going to get fixed with Gardner Minshew, which is one of those main reasons for those inconsistencies. And you look at his numbers this year, uh, and you know I think it, it's been all over the board, man. He's had some good games, he's had some bad games, and when, the, when it's a bad game, it really, turns in, it really turns ugly, man. I'm not gonna lie to you. Right now he's sitting at 63.2% completions, just under 200 yards passing per game, and then a pretty even split of touchdowns and interceptions to this point, but given the amount of games that he's actually started, uh, I, I, I'm not in love with that eight interception figure that he has right now. The Steelers definitely have an opportunity. Okay, now we shift to the offense here, and I really think that there's some really big keys for the Steelers offense to try and get a big time victory here in week 15. Number one, they didn't do it last week. Mitch Trubisky had three turnover worthy throws last week, uh, <laughs> and he needs to do a better job this week, plain and simply. This year, it, during the 2023 season, the Steelers are 6-3 and three in games without an interception, all right? Now, most of those games are with Kenny Pickett. That was one of the best things about Kenny Pickett is that, you know, he wasn't really putting the ball in the end zone, but he wasn't giving the ball to the other team either. Mitch Trubisky so far this year hasn't really been putting the ball in the end zone, and he's giving the, 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 the ball to the other team. So this week, Mitch Trubisky, it is absolutely paramount that he protects the football, that is how this Steelers team is designed to win football games. You dominate on defense and with the run game, you protect the football, and then you win the game late. That's how this Steelers team likes to win games. And if Trubisky is consistently putting the ball in harm's way, the Steelers can't win in the way that they are trying to win, which is definitely detrimental to their chances of winning in this ball game. So predict it for me down there in the comments section. Will Trubisky stay clean in week 15? Will he throw an interception or will he not? Type yes or no with your prediction down there in the comments section. So a way that you can help Mitchell Trubisky protect the football here is prioritize the run game with Jalen Warren and, Naj and Najee Harris here. And listen, the Steelers' run game has actually been pretty decent here, especially during the second half of the season. And their running back here, their number two running back for some reason, Jalen Warren, is currently uh, the most valuable offensive player on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, the, why is he still getting second team reps, essentially, as the number two running back? I don't know, man, but he's already put up 22.6 points above replacement this year. That is far and away the highest of any Steelers skill position player this year. So if I am Mike Sullivan, if I am Eddie Faulkner, I'm in charge of putting together the offensive game plan. I am absolutely putting Jalen Warren out there as much as I can. And really, that should be the, the, the main focus here is to get the ball in the hands of Jalen Warren. And if you do that, if you, if you feed Najee, if you feed Jalen here, 
that gives Mitchell Trubisky less opportunities to throw those dreaded interceptions that we're trying to avoid here this week. Now, next on my list of keys to victory here is you got to get George Pickens more involved, especially when you're throwing the ball down the field. Yes, you got to prioritize the run game. I think that uh, it's probably got to be at least a 60-40 split run to pass. But when you do throw the football, you got to want to get to get it to George Pickens. And this is what I'm going to be calling the Pickens rule from now on. If you have number 14 on one-on-one -on -one coverage with no safety help, you got to throw him the football deep, all right, plain and simply. There should be an easy uh, hot route for George Pickens. If you see one-on-one -on -one coverage with no safety help over the top, you just got to give him a little signal. He's running a streak, and you're throwing up a 50-50 ball because when you throw it up to George Pickens with his size, with his body control, with his ability to make those catches in those 50-50 situations, it's more like 80-20. So I'm taking those odds to get those big chunk plays as much as I can, even with a guy like Mitchell Trubisky, who I think we all acknowledge is not the best quarterback in the National Football League. And then the big thing here for the Steelers, my final key to victory, is that I think this one's going to be relatively close in the fourth quarter here. I think the Steelers are going to have an opportunity late in this football game to win it. And you just got to make that big play when it happens, whether that's a big-time interception, whether that's a game-winning drive by Mitchell Trubisky, whether that's a huge catch from George Pickens, whether it's a special teams thing. Whatever the thing may be, there's going to be a play to be made, and the team that makes that big play is going to win this football game. And we already went over the stakes earlier on today's show. The stakes could not be higher. It definitely feels like the season is on the line for the black and gold this week. So unfortunately... I just don't trust Mitchell Trubisky to protect the football, guys. I think he's going to throw at least one interception. I don't trust him to make that big play in the fourth quarter. And this is an Indianapolis Colts team that has beaten, uh, that has beaten teams, and they're playing good football right now. So I don't trust the Steelers' offense as much as I would like. Uh, so I'm going to go with the Colts to win this one in a one-score football game, 24-16 final score, and the Steelers are going to lose their third straight game in a row. I really hope I'm wrong. We're going to be right here covering it with you guys here on the live watch party, but that is my official score prediction. Now, it's your turn. Get down there in the comment section and let me know your score prediction for Steelers versus Colts here in Week 15. Do you have confidence in Mitchell Trubisky? Do you think they go out on the road and get this big-time victory against a current AFC playoff team? I'm a little bit more skeptical, but let me know what you guys think down there in the comments section. And that'll be it for this week's preview, guys. Thank you so much for all of your support. Again, make sure you click that subscribe button and join us for our live watch party, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time on Saturday, where we'll be covering every single snap of Steelers versus Colts here in week 15.